G'day guys and welcome to today's YouTube video. I'm your host Grant and this is my daughter Sophia and we're here to talk about a pretty serious topic. I know we love to goof around on this channel but today we're going to be putting our serious hats on just like So's hair, very serious and talking about a really big topic called flow hives and our notion is to forget flow hives. But before we start this video I should talk to Soph about the truth about my opinion of this product. I have a bit of a biased opinion because I was one of the members from the start. Back in 2015, how old do you reckon you would have been? I was four. Yeah, four years old. I'll put a picture up of you, mm -hmm. an adorable one in the corner probably. Uh, no, you, you were won't. four years old and I was having a very much needed night out with uh, some of my friends. And we're with one of my mates, Luke, and another one, Angela. And this guy, Luke, that we hung out with had a bit of technology savvy. He even had an Apple computer. And back then that was pretty cool. Um, and he had this thing called this crowdfunding. We'd never heard of it. And he talked about how this guy from Byron Bay was going to re, re revitalize the bee industry. We knew nothing about a bee. We are all, all only knew they stung you on your butt if you sat on them. But back then when I was a younger lad, I thought, this is great. Aussie's jumping on board. So Angela, Luke and I, we all chucked about 150 bucks uh, into the uh, fund, gave it to him in cash because we didn't even know how to do online transfers back then. And he was a savvy one. And he went and uh, put money on this crowdfund crowdfunding project. And I'm being a little bit disturbed because as I'm recording this, we've got some ducks next to us and they're just uh, tapping a sign, which is quite embarrassing. So we, sorry about that little distraction. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we all pitched in some money. Luke did the transfer and we all felt part of this program. It took us, it took us five years to save up to get a flow hive um, because back then we were a young family. So was tiny. I was very uh, thin back in those days. Well, the thing is, right, I always wanted a beehive, but I put it in the back burner because it was way too expensive. And then five years later, we finally got enough coin. My beautiful wife, Olga said, let's pull the trigger. Let's finally get one. Well, we ended up getting a flow hive and we'll put some footage up in a minute. And we're here to tell you our thoughts, our reaction, and our conclusion when it comes to flow hives. Now back to that crowdfunding stuff, they only asked for like a hundred thousand. Guess how much money just got given to them by generous Australians like your dad. Ask for a hundred thousand? Probably double it, sorry. I'll double it and double it again. Is that how much? And double it again. Again? And again? And again. Yeah, they made like 12 million. It was oh, the biggest boy. crowdfunding project in history. And that's 12 million US, so. And then, then about two years later, or 2018, they actually asked for more money, which was a little bit strange. But we're gonna talk about money and uh, and how much is too much, that's another discussion for another day. But let's, uh, let's move my positive bites aside and find out the truth about these beehives. Now, anyone who knows our channel well knows we love to have learning intentions and structure before we start, both to stop me waffling on and also to maximize your experience as viewers. The first topic of our connection and our biased positive feelings towards this product, we've already said, so let's move on to number two. Soph? Um, does it work? My story, my experience. All right, then we're gonna jump into the mechanical reality of flow hives. Yes, it is a product, a device with moving parts. So things will always go from good to bad. But I was talking to this topic about broken flow hives with a really well-known bee enthusiast. And he said he likes to compare the flow hive to a Tesla and a regular beehive to a Ford and use what they refer to in the industry as a Ford versus Tesla debate. And this is just something I found really interesting. Number four, the price. There's this promoted misconception regarding the price of conventional beehives and its extraction equipment. Now, I wish I had known this about this in segment four before I started beehives. It would change everything completely. We're going to talk about the financial reality of beekeeping. It's going to be a two minute segment, but it will change your life. Number five, so Are flow hives a barrier to beekeeping? Well said, Soph. Then we're going to talk about the target audience of flow hives because like a lot of you, flow hive ads pop up all the time in our Facebook feed and my mate's Facebook feed. Number seven. Does this product endanger the future of bees in Australia? Well said, Soph. Does the product endanger bees in general? Wow, it's heavy stuff. Number eight, this is our message to Flowhive. Soph and I have had a bit of a brainstorm. Flowhive does a lot of charity work and they do some great stuff. 
but we've got some little things that we think they could do to make their product better and make beekeeping benefit a global scale. Number nine, Soph. Final thoughts. That's always my favorite segment when we get together, Soph and I, and we just recap and bring it all together. All right, let's get into it. Now to understand our story, you need a bit of an overview of what our backyard looks like. Now, as you can see this seat here, this is where Sophia and I was filming earlier today. Uh, and you'll see our beehive situated here. It's actually slightly behind the fountain and there's a nice hedge there and a, a subdivision behind us with townhouses. Now the idea was that our beehive uh, nestled in this beautiful corner would cross pollinate all of our fruit trees, which are espalied against the fence and dwarf our columnar apples and columnar um, peaches in rows. And this would, would further aid our vegetable patch that was in easy reach. And as bees fly relatively straight lines, you can imagine in your head, it was beautifully mapped out. So we were ready to get our beehive installed. And then the beehive came and boy, was it a beautiful installment in our backyard, almost like backyard furniture. And we absolutely adored it. We'd be sitting out, watching it. And then came the time when we checked our frames and it looked ready to harvest. We dressed up like spacemen, astronauts, cosmonauts, whatever you want to call us. We were pumped, we were excited, and we were just so proud of this achievement. Um, behind our flow hive with our homemade shelf, uh, turning the taps on, and by golly, it did work. And we absolutely loved it. And there was nothing more satisfying than seeing those jars of honey slowly fill up. Little do we know, disaster was looming. So, so Sophia and I started noticing some drastic changes to the hive. Over a relatively short period, the activity at the hive entrance really slowed down. So we called our good friend, who's our bee mentor, who dropped everything and ran over and inspected the hive with us, noticing thousands and thousands of dead bees, both in the viewing window in the super and around the queen excluder. And let me tell you, they were thick and fast and it was horrific. Our family was devastated. We felt ashamed of ourselves, upset. We felt like we had let down the bee community, uh, ourselves, and especially our mentor who had been spending so much time training us in the way of the bee. So my wife and I were on a mission to find a new queen because we'd obviously lost our queen. After an extensive search, we couldn't find it. Finally found this really good company called Peninsula Honey that supplied us with a queen bee. And what you'll notice, she's in a little bee case that goes between the frames with a honey block where the worker bees eat out and the other bees eat out. And it gives the hive enough time to become acclimatized with the queen so they don't kill it. So soon the queen had been released by the other bees. They were used to her pheromones. You'll notice we had taken our super off and doubled down our hive. And as you can see, the hive was slowly repairing. We managed to catch it before it was too late, but by golly, it was close to a complete colony collapse. Now we'd sort of brought the hive back alive. We had to now find the cause of the mass event. So the hive had been saved, the queen had been restored, and it was humming along quite well, but I knew it was only a matter of time before the hive succumbed to the same fate as the previous queen. We had some detective work to do. We had to find out the cause, the culprit, the trigger point. So I had a bit of a knock on the door, got to know all my neighbors a bit better, and I remember the townhouse behind us who loved Alfresco living. And I went and talked about how we're quite close to a hive, um, and really lovely family, but I noticed on their table they had got a new product, and this was a new product they had. It was this thing that they bought online, and it was a safe, effective, and affordable pest control. So we have a Scotchman's Creek, this nice little uh, stormwater catchment near us that brings up a lot of mosquitoes, and they'd had a gutful. And so they'd mounted this remote control insect killer. And then every time they're outside having a smoke or a nice uh, afternoon dinner, they will be puffing insect spray aside straight into our backyard to help them have the alfresco lifestyle. So I had a problem. I had my neighbors essentially poisoning the atmosphere right near my hive. So what I did was I bit the bullet and I went to Bunnings and I bought this. It cost a little bit of coin, 
but it was an insect trapper. And I brought it over and I said to them, look, I've bought this. I'm going to have this on, uh, on, the, on Friday nights and Saturday nights. And if you want Thursday nights, any night you want, text me and I'll put this on. I'll happily pay the electricity bill. It's not an insect zapper. It's a lure. It has a diode that releases carbon dioxide. Uh, so at night, mosquitoes are sucked in and pushed into the cage in the bottom. And then the next day, uh, they're exhausted and they're dead. And then I'd feed the dead one to the quail. Pesticide free. So what I'm saying is, in order to be a good beekeeper, you have to be a good detective and you have to be willing to think outside the box. And once we got this, uh, this really cool product operational, yes, it cost me $119 plus the electricity that I seem to be running. Um, yes, I'm doing them a favor, but by doing them a favor, they're not using pesticides, which is protecting our hive. So this footage was taken about two months later, and as you can see, the beehive has recovered nicely, but there's no super on top. And this is where we found some super problems with Flow High. So here's a decommissioned super off my hive. As you can see, it doesn't have the gabled roof on top, but you can see the uh, well patented well-known honey flow frames. We've all seen this on the ad a million times. We put the honey flow key in, um, turn it, I think, anti-clockwise, and it dislodges the plastic comb and the honey flows down and is tapped out. As you can see, mine is completely empty. I've high pressure hosed it, I've cleaned it, I've put it in boiling water, it still looks filthy. But I just wanna show you something. I just wanna show you how much pressure is this unit is put down with just minimal propolis left. If you can see this, and this is what I started thinking to do with flow hives. There's a lot of accounts of the plastic breaking or the, or the flames buckling online. And I just wanna take a frame out to have a look at you. Now this frame here has been cleaned umpteen times, been about four hours on it and it is disgusting. Don't worry beekeepers, there's no way I'm putting this back in the hive. Now I attempted to clean it without disassembling the actual frames. And you do that by taking the metal off and it turns into about a 500 piece Lego set. And then you've got to put the wire back under tension. And you can see where I tried boiling, boiling water but missed and see those dead mummified bees lodged in. Some people on the net say, just put it back in, the bees will clean it. But there's no way I'm putting the bee community at that much peril through laziness. Now this is probably my cleanest frame and it's still disgusting, absolutely disgusting. Now those flow frames basically work the exact same way as a conventional beehive works with the honeycomb frames. And if you see, they actually sit and I'm even thinking about retrofitting and putting a, a plaster board in the window and just turning it into a regular frame hive. But let's go and let's look in detail at these broken frames. Now, my first instinct was to dunk the frame in boiling water and submerge it, which is a great idea, which is what professional beekeepers do with a 44 gallon drum. However, the website says you cannot put it in water above 80 degrees Celsius for more than five minutes, which created a real big conundrum for me to work out what to do without opening it. The next thing I thought was I could just use ethanol or methylated spirits. Like boiling water though, you can only have it submerged for five minutes. Sodium hydrochloride is the best for 20 minutes, but I didn't have any of that on hand and I wasn't actually confident that it would get in there and clean. So in order to salvage my beehive, I have to deliberately void my warranty and take that high tensile wire off and get under it, separate it into uh, God knows how many pieces and clean it by hand, hoping that I can put it back together and then put it under tension. It's a nightmare of a job. I'll make a video when I do it because it'll be quite funny to watch. However, I also noticed I couldn't buy any spare parts unless they were very simple things like flow hive covers. And it's like that Ford slash Tesla debate. You can fix a Ford, but you can't fix a Tesla. And Tesla, like Honey uh, Flow Hive, does not let you buy any parts you want. You have to get permission before they'll send the parts off. And I've heard many varied stories. So at the moment, my beehive is ruined unless I avoid that warranty. And you might be wondering, why am I not showing the Flow Hive website? The website clearly stipulates you cannot use any of their um, any of their digital material in broadcasting as it is a copyright infringement and you'll be asked to take it down or contacted by solicitors. Now the costly conventional process setup. 
Wow, that's a bit of a mouthful. But that's one thing that Flowhive repeatedly says on their website that getting a Flowhive is an easy way to get into beehives because you don't need to worry about all the overheads. In my opinion, this is a myth. And I spent 10 minutes just doing a couple of Google searches to have a look and bust this myth of conventional beekeeping material and the cost. We all know about like extractors and we all see them at some shops for 500 bucks. Of course, you can get really good ones, but you also can hire a good honey extractor for $32 per day or 50 bucks, two bucks over the weekend. And this is a really cool guy in Brunswick that has a lot of hire equipment. So if you're new to beekeeping, you don't need to get all the gear, you can hire it. And yes, you can buy it online, shop around and get some good deals on honey extractors. Now let's look at the beehive itself. Now, if you like this kind of lacquered look, which I know I love, you can get the two brood boxes and get another one for a super for 160 bucks. Or if you want to jump and get a whole entire starter kit, you can get a really good starter kit from Bob's Beekeeping. I use them quite a bit. I like them too. For $500 with reading material, uh, with gloves, with pre-pressed um, wax frames, uh, even a smoker and a suit thrown in. Okay. Now, if you're a little bit lazy, you don't want to buy bees and just get an entire double box delivered to your door, 525 bucks. Now, this, my friend, is a good price. To get a flow hive, uh, what I did was a $1,290 roughly dollars, plus another 250 bucks uh, for the bees. So it worked out about $1,500. For that, I could have got three whole beehives. And before you say, oh, but I want something beautiful like furniture, there's some amazing handmade Australian stuff out there. Look at this top bar beehive. Only 350 bucks. A really cool guy makes it out, of, out from Warrandyte. Just look at it, Facebook Marketplace. And this is a beautiful work of art. So now we have fully busted the myth that conventional beehives are not more expensive. The gear lasts forever. If you buy really good stuff, but you can also hire until you've got enough money. Over to you, Sophie, have you got any questions? Um, yes, my first question is, is the flow hive a barrier to beekeeping? It's a good question. Is flow hive a barrier to beekeeping? In about 2017, so there was a big surge in people joining bee clubs and a lot of it got put down to the invention of the flow hive. But I actually believe that there's been a big change in the last five or so years where people are moving to become more sustainable, invite, you're moving a lot of fiddling stuff sustainable into the environment and I think the media around flow hive generated hype in beehive keeping which I think would have happened anyway because you've got to remember Soph what do you reckon the average age of an Australian beehive or apiarist is um she's gone very quiet mm. you're gonna be shocked it's 60 years old and we've met a lot of beekeepers over the years uh, since we started and beekeeping people are epic but they're really not interested in making stacks of cash or wasting their life on social media so a lot of the beekeepers weren't promoting themselves actively because they had better things to do so I think I think the flow hive helped generate media attention but I actually think the price of 1,400 for one beehive actually gets more good people out of beekeeping than potential people into beekeeping nice any other questions so um, what is the target audience of flow hives? Wow, like a real reporter. Nice question, so Well, a lot of me, my friends, we get popping up in our feeds all the time. And I've had a look at a lot of the videos that they promote, and they all seem to be between 30 and 45 um, sort of middle-aged men and women, right? And they, they're sort of promoted as a gadget for the man or woman who has everything. And the problem with this, Soph, is they're seeing the beehive as a gadget. And I know, of, and as you, do you know what job I have as a profession, Soph? Yes. What is it? Teacher. Yeah, I'm a primary school teacher. And I'm in quite an affluent area. I don't live there, but I teach there. And over the years, I'm known as the sustainable guy with the recycling and all that stuff. So I have a lot of people in parent-teacher interviews, parents say, oh, what do you know about flow hives? Until about two years ago, 18 months ago, we didn't have one. And I'd say, oh, I always wanted to get one. Great, great, great. I've known of nine people, Soph, that have got flow hives. And I check in with them every couple of years with the kids. What's it doing? What's it doing? And the thing is, so two of the of the nine people uh, have got rid of their um, flow hive, right? Wow. One still is obsessed with uh, obsessed with it. 
But the other six kids, when I ask regularly, they say, oh, I don't know, it's just rotting basically in the corner of our backyard. We don't touch it anymore. It's too much work for mum and dad. So I think the target audience might be part of the problem. It's cashed up people that want a gift. Because I've got a question for you, Soph. Is it good to give someone a puppy for Christmas? I would have loved it as a present, but not many people like dogs. Is that something RSP say wants? People have to be giving dogs as presents? No, because if they if they don't like if they don't take care of it, it means it could be out on the street or given back to them. Then why is it good to give a beehive as a present when bees are a critically endangered almost? critically endangered species. It's just something for you to think about. You it's wouldn't give a puppy area. as a present, but you give a beehive as a present. So I think part of the target audience needs readjusting for flow hives personally. Nice. All right, so if this brings us to my favorite segment, final thoughts. So questions? Do you regret buying a flow hive? A yeah, good question. So I'm gonna flick it back to you first. Do you regret buying a flow hive? I don't, I love it. It's great. And it's really nice seeing the bees going up and back and up and back. Anyways. <laughs> and this is what I love about being a bee, bee apiarist or beehive owner, whatever you want to call me, is our children, myself, we get this big love of bees. Uh, I don't regret buying a flow hive. I wish I never did did buy a flow hive but if it wasn't for the flow hive I wouldn't have, wouldn't have got into it from the first place so I regret wasting 1400 personally for a product but I could have got a similar product or three of them for that price but I'm really glad I bought it because it got both Soph and I into beehives. Soph next question. Uh, would you recommend a flow hive? Yeah, I'd say forget flow hives or say no to flow hives. Uh, they're a well-designed product. Uh, they're Australian made, which we've got to support. However, when it comes to value for money uh, and the notion that bee, it's an easy way to keep bees or it's a less intrusive way to keep bees, if you think the only way, way you're touching bees is extracting honey, you don't have a clue what you're doing. Beehive, it's a labor intensive job. Um, if you have a super that's uh, that's got, got honey in and you need to do a beehive inspection, it weighs like 25 kilos. So if you're actually not a super strong person, it's actually counterintuitive. Get a regular fly, beehive in my opinion, it's actually lighter. Um, so I don't recommend getting one, but I'm glad I did. Mm. So Sof, your final thoughts on beekeeping? Um, my final thoughts? Uh, a little bit lost for words. Okay, <laughs> so I'll, I'll talk to you about it. I, I love beekeeping. I love the, the, the friends we've made along, like our awesome bee mentor mm -hmm. and some of the people we've met along the way. Uh, I really like how it's a family thing. You, me, and even our, our niece Ari. How old's Ari? Ari, she's seven. I think seven, yeah, seven. She does it too, and she's amazing. Ari, you're a natural better than both of us put together. It's a family activity, it's a friendship activity, it brings us together, we share the product, and most of all, it's like having the aquarium outside. So get into beekeeping for sure, but maybe think twice about getting a flow hive. Get a good mentor, get some education, and get into it. Yep. All right, well said. I think there's a bee in my hand. <laughs> Thanks.